Hunting is a way of life for a lot of people. Uh, we make memories out of it, we make bonds, uh, we feed our family. It's, it's something that's very important in my life and, uh, and, and it's very important for me to express those things to the people around me. One thing I love the most about the great outdoors is just getting to take all the noise out of the world away. Just getting to go sit in the woods with yourself, with your father, with your brother, to just fully experience what it's like to just hang out in the woods and look for animals. So this whole idea and this whole trip started on the preface that we were going to do something big for my 39th birthday, which was January 21st. And this happened about seven months ago. Uh, Leroy said, hey, you want to kill a buffalo? Listo. Getting ready to go to Montana from South Texas and Idaho. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna go sight in our weapons and make sure they're on point. When we get over there, we're gonna re-sight in because they're gonna change in altitude. So. You know, being from South Texas, uh, we see a lot of deer, nail guy, uh, bird. We do a lot of bird hunting, but nothing as exhausting as a buffalo hunt or enticing. So when we set out on this adventure seven days ago, we set out um, with the idea of going from South Texas, which is at zero uh, sea level, all the way to about 7,000 feet in Idaho, uh, Leodore. And that's where we uh, traveled 2,000 miles to, to hunt this bison that had been tracked for about two or three days. That's how the idea started. Oh, so if you look, if you look through here, see, it's the center of the bullseye, in the bullseye almost? No, it's way off, it's way up. Okay, did it move it? Yeah. Well, move the, the bullet, the center to the bullseye and, and hold it there. Okay. okay. Uh, You're holding it tight? Yep. Now, if you look down into the right, you'll see a hole. Yep, I see it. That's where I hit, okay? So we'll so, do three clicks left, two clicks up. Uh, we're gonna go down. My name's Leroy Gonzalez Jr. I'm third generation farmer and rancher and, uh, and hunter. Um, I've been hunting since I was five years old. Uh, my dad started taking me to the, to the ranch and to the lease with his, with his friends at a very young age. I remember going, sitting in the stands with him and sleeping in a sleeping bag in the blind, waiting for the deer and javelinas to come out. And uh, it was something that was really made a mark on my life and it's put me to where I'm at now. Yeah, so Leroy, obviously, um, Leroy, he deals a lot with Gunworks and uh, EOTech and they sent them down a rifle. Uh, a 300 Win Mag EOTech uh, with some beautiful scope. It's a beautiful gun, carbon fiber. It's it's amazing. It's how he says it, the Ferrari of guns. And uh, we shot it in at, at sea level. Um, and why that makes a difference is because of trajectory, wind, velocity, everything else. Uh, who is Javier? That's a good question. I think as time goes uh, on, I, you know, in every aspect of life you evolve. And I think this uh, this trip has definitely evolved me into what I want to be in the future. And that's somebody stronger and, and, and somebody who takes on more challenges. Um, but my background is I'm a first generation um, American to be born on this side of the US. My mother sacrificed uh, everything to get here at 19. She had me at 21. Uh, she had an eighth grade education. So education was always emphasized in my house because my father, who adopted me at a very young age, uh, was a doctor, so he, he really pushed education. So I went out, went to college, messed around, and then I got serious and got my MBA, 
and uh, now I'm just enjoying life outdoors. I love this. I don't want to do anything else. I mean, you're on fire. Well, we sighted in our 300 wind mag. We're ready to go to Idaho. See how it how it turns out for us. We leave tomorrow morning early and. Uh, now it's all about packing the truck. We got all of our gear organized, all of our guns sighted in. Now we go see what we can do. We're leaving at midnight, right? Leaving at midnight. <laughs> What did I do to prepare for this trip? Well, <laughs> mentally I should have done a lot more, but uh, over the last two years I have been just continuously training, uh, lifting weights and, and, and just being, you know, as agile as I can be, running and learning a lot about myself and my injuries. But for this trip specifically, uh, yeah, I bought a new truck uh, and uh, that was a big part of it because if you're going on a 4,000 mile road trip, you need to have the right vehicle to do it so when you're climbing mountains with a trailer and a heavy bison in the back you know it would have been a different story I think today if we didn't kill the bison uh, and that is a story in itself but um, yeah we we've been preparing for this trip for the last three or four months how do you feel what's that how are you oh, I'm doing good how about yourself excited or not oh yeah definitely excited about to go to Idaho never been there be great. Can't wait to see what it's like. It's had a really big goal. Glad to be out of the seat. Back and back and butts really starting to hurt. <laughs> Sitting down for what? What are we on? 15 or 16 hours? Uh, yeah, driving. Uh, driving for me has been something that it's in my DNA. So I've been doing it for a very long time. I grew up on a tractor at 10 years old, driving all day from sun, sunrise to sunset uh, for many years. So the drive. Uh, the first day was 26 hours, which was cut short, I would say, because uh, we had a blizzard north of Utah, Salt Lake City. So we decided to stop at a hotel. But today, uh, we have 32 hours on the clock that we got to drive back to South Texas. So we're going to drive down, I think, five different states, and we're going to drive 32 hours straight, which is a normal day. We're gonna go old school. I wanna start this hunt uh, where we started as hunters a little later than where we started, but we're gonna go 30-30 Winchester and uh, see, make sure I can hit a target at 25. Got my trusty Federal Premium 30-30 ammo. I'm gonna go give it, give it hell.
This thing's not threaded for suppressors. I really have hearing loss from all the shooting that I've done growing up without suppressors. And uh, it's a big thing that we're fighting with uh, in the gun activist uh, fight is, you know, the ability to purchase and use suppressors for hunting and, and whatnot. They think that we need to just use strictly old equipment like this, which is fun and I'm gonna use it on this trip. But uh, having hearing loss uh, makes me very, very uh, uh, sensitive to, yeah, and, and not shooting without, or shooting without, uh, without uh, ear protection. It's a little cold, my brain's not working. But uh, I'm gonna go grab uh, some hearing protection. I'll be right back. Plugs are frozen. Yeah. I gotta soften them up. <laughs> I can show you another hole you can put in <laughs> to warm it up. All right, after I made my adjustment, you can see center mass. I'm ready, let's go. I know where to now. I'll put it up for you. Hands are so cold. One, two. Four. Okay. She's loaded and ready to go. Now I'm sighted in with this gun. I know where she's hitting. I'm happy. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this gun. This is a more modern got a scope on it. You can see this one doesn't have a scope. This one's got an EOTech. She's on. Well, we woke up this morning and it was negative 25, negative 40 windshield, way too cold to let the dogs out. So we're gonna cruise, get some, get some, uh, some pictures and some video of the area and just go and get a feel for the land. Uh, either way, it's a beautiful day in South Idaho and uh, we're learning a lot, so stay wild. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, day one in Idaho, I think it, somebody said wind chill of minus 40, uh, so pretty cold. With the right gear, not too bad. Sunset was beautiful, sunrise was beautiful, coffee's good, the day's gonna be great. The day we got here, Brock showed us a video of, from the security camera on this house here, and uh, it captured a mountain lion killing uh, this young mule deer fawn, it looks like, from last year. Um, so, cat's still in the area. His food's here, he's gonna come back, she's gonna come back. Hopefully we can treat it, run it out of the area, even if we don't harvest it, just to get him out of the area so he's not doing this around the homes. It'd be a big plus for the land. But that's Mother Nature in the raw right there. Yeah.
pretty chilly, middle of the day. It's warmed up to a negative 10, I think, from negative 25 this morning. Uh, Racken's plan is to go up the canyon here, try to cut a track from the line, and come back and get the dogs, and see what we can accomplish. See if we can get one of these cats killed, see what happens. The first day was super cold. The houndsmen decided that they weren't going to release dogs in, unless it warmed up. So we spent most of the day traveling up and down the canyons anywhere that we can get in and out of. And uh, we were looking for tracks. We found a few older tracks, nothing new. Uh, found a kill that, a, that a, uh, a mountain lion had done. And the night before, we actually had video of it from the security camera. And uh, we went through that area just scouring the canyons looking for, for mountain lion tracks. It was so cold, they, not, not a lot of things moved. I mean, even the deer that we saw were laid up under trees. It was negative 25. Pretty much for the next two days, that's, that's all we did was, was drive around looking for tracks until the last day. And when we finally found something that, that the dogs were gonna get on. So being from South Texas, we don't see snow or ice very often. I think uh, in my lifetime, maybe twice. Uh, so arriving to Idaho and seeing everything white, uh, everything frozen, was very humbling. You know, seeing the animals and how they survived in that conditions, how they had a hard time tracking through the snow, and, and it was, I was, it was beyond me to to, un to understand how they stay warm in that. All the way from South Texas, smoked meal guy that we prepared down in South Texas. We knew it was going to be cold, so we started a fire and smoked this meat a quarter of the way through. Our chef Miguel is excellent in doing what he does. He finished it off, and we're having South Texas antelope in Idaho. Let's go where there's no reception. See if we can make it on our own. deep in If we hold Mississippi through the night, hundreds of miles away. The water is warm. Let's dip our toes right in and be reborn. I don't know why we wait. The water's warm. Let's be reborn. The water's warm. So after our second day there, uh, it looked like it was warming up a little bit. When I say warming up, it went from negative 25 to negative one. Uh, the guys were, were anxious to get out and chase cats and put their dogs on tracks, and they started early. Uh, I get a call around 7.30 from Bracken, and he was telling me that they've been looking for tracks since two in the morning, and they found some, and they get ready, get your gear on. And, and so, so they were coming from the other side of, of the valley, and uh, from where his house was at. So we had about 20, 30 minutes to get ready, and we did, and we got in the truck, and we went, and we found them. It was, it was crazy. Okay, another dog, I remember. We'll, that one's fresher. We'll wait for these, or we go up there with these out, or how do you do? Um, do you we'll do? go with these out, it'll take okay. a little bit work. Depends how it sounds. Yeah, we'll sit here if for If they're a real loud and it sounds good, we'll, we'll just start walking them up. Yeah. All right, cool, let's do it. Right at the 40 mark, it could be a young tom or a good tom. I've seen them toms be 38. Yeah, a pretty damn good tom. Yeah. This is awesome. I never thought growing up that I'd be from South Texas, 
in Idaho in the snow. You know, I've hunted bobcats and coyotes and raccoons. Never thought I'd have a chance to chase them out. Though. How far does it go? I'd probably take them then because they're just running the... So the first set of dogs, Harley, Rebel, they were up there and they, wanna, they went on a track and it's looking like they are treed at 902 yards. All of them are on a tree, so uh, pretty confident that... But that's that, the clock, no? That they have a, 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 an animal treed up. 902. Well, thank God for technology. They got us to 300 yards. Let's go check it out. Never in my lifetime did I think I'd be on a mountain of snow in zero degree weather. There's two mountain lions treated up here. We're gonna go check them out. It's my first time I'll ever lay eyes on a mountain lion in a while. So Bracken sets the, the dogs out on a track and, and they get hot and they, they start barking and chasing this, this, this cat up and down, down this, this canyon and, and up this mountain. We're watching everything on, on the GPS, listening to everything. We can hear the dogs barking. And I think it was within 20 or 30 minutes, they had a, a cat treat. Uh, it happened to be uh, quite the adventure. The, 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 the cat was over a mile away uh, and up a, a very steep, steep embankment. And we had to figure a way to get around it. So we did, we, we went around the canyon over a hill and into another canyon. And, uh, and we walked probably 300 yards from where we couldn't go no more. And uh, walked up on, on the dogs, they're, they're all barking up a tree just like you see on TV. And uh, we get there and to my surprise, it was not one cat, but two cats. You know, I've never seen a mountain lion in, in the wild and uh, much less two. So to get, to get my eyes on two cats in the same day, it was pretty special. Well, we uh, made a long hike, we got in here. Looks like uh, we crossed paths, we caught two kittens. We got one in this tree, we got one a few trees over. Dogs did awesome, but at least we got some life for the next years to come. Back on the Oregon Trail, headed north to Ledor, Idaho. Hopefully, shoot some coyotes and maybe a wolf. For sure, bison. We were two days in uh, in Paris hunting cats. We treed two cats this evening. Uh, they were they were smaller cats. We decided to it was best to pull off of them and let them go and, and not harass them a little further than what we were doing. We didn't mean to. Uh, unfortunately, when we run dogs, you don't know if it's going to be a male, female, or kittens. But uh, it was good for the dogs. We had fun. And north on the Oregon Trail, we go. 
<coughs> well, also, I was t- everything here, too. Like, all the little- Finally, we made it. Yes. We made it. It's Buffalo time tomorrow. We made it in. It's like 9.30. Literally in the middle of nowhere. A lot of people say that. But it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> 2,000 miles. <laughs> The mindset up here of these people is exactly the same mindset that I grew up in. You know, we all grew up, what we have in common is that we have respect for the animals, we have respect for the land, and we have respect for nature. And I think when you meet those like-minded people, those, that's the, you have the same mindset and you have an instant connection. We always had a rule. been hanging on this ridge up in this timber and he sometimes has been going over there but he's also been calving so then it's been you know a few days since he's seen it um but you're gonna walk out this way and you're gonna go up along that rim the hopefully i'm hoping that the wind blew the drifts over so you got less snow to walk through go up that ridge and into that saddle you can see that cornice there where the drifts have been blowing over the edge so that's going to be miserable so i would stay to the right and then glass down in there, glass down these flats, just kind of glass this whole and stuff. But yeah, he doesn't, he hasn't seen it over here. So just kind of focus on this. I don't know if we'll see it. Today's the morning, Buffalo morning. I've been waiting about five days for this. You don't bring somebody from the city out here with zero knowledge uh, because you don't know how they're going to react to the environment. And that's a big component out here is not only physically uh, fit, but mentally fit. Uh, it's, it's, a big, it's a big part of this living in this lifestyle. I mean, it's desolate out here. Most of the populations out here are 100, maybe to 500. It's not a lot in Idaho and in Montana. Yeah, the mindset of the people and the culture seems very, very much like what I grew up in, you know? Everything's hard. Everybody has a tractor, everybody has a truck, everybody has a trailer, everybody maintains their cattle. So I think the connection was instant. You know, I feel like part of them from South Texas and all the people that we've met along the way, we've invited back to Texas. So we have a place for them to stay and we want to show them our South Texas hunting too. So I think that's exciting. Harder than I thought, but I wasn't thinking. But well worth the views. But we'll see, Buffalo. This has been an incredible trek, but it's difficult. It's pretty damn difficult, even with training for me. And more than anything, it's the altitude and the catching my breath. But we'll see. We're gonna work our way back around this hill over to the next drainage and be able to look in the river bottoms down here and see if that bull has just been down getting some water and stuff. The bulls don't water every day. They can go days, but then the days they drink, they drink a lot and they fill up. And so where we haven't seen a ton of fresh sign up here and we obviously don't see him, I want to get back to where we can see a whole bunch of river bottom and see if he's down there today. My name is Cody Howerton. I'm a co-owner of Brandon Bison. Uh, I've been guiding for 10 years and uh, been guiding buffalo the last, last two. Yeah, I, I started hunting uh, from the time I could walk. My dad was taking me out and uh, chasing elk and deer and it's been a big part of my life uh, the whole time and, and it's something I've passed down to my kids as well. And so I started, I started you know, basically when I could walk and my kids did the same and so We've hunted, you know, we've been out here in Idaho and Montana our whole lives, so, you know, a lot of mule deer, a lot of elk, um, hunt some moose and bears and mountain goats, and so we've, we've been out in the mountains a lot, and uh, it's been a, it's been a, a staple in our, in our lives for sure. Uh, when we hunt bison, it's, it's, uh, it changes every time. It depends on the age, depends on the size of the bull and the life he's had. Um, our buffalo are on large ranches, they see very few people, 
and so they're not they're they're not like Yellowstone buffalo, you know. They're 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 more wary, they're more skittish. But as they get old and the bigger bulls, you know, they don't have many natural predators. You know, maybe a wolf can take them down, um, but that's pretty rare too. And so they're not afraid of much. And so a big part of what we do is just trying to make sure that uh, we get in front of the bulls. They're not going to get too far up in the mountains because you know. And so we want to make sure that we're killing them down in a good area to get them out. And with those bulls, it's it's much like a Cape Buffalo hunt in Africa. You know, like they're not too worried about you, and, and we can kind of go right at them. But when you get into their zone, um, <clears throat> you got to start watching for signs because depending on the bull and what he's had in his life, uh, their zones can be different sized, and those bulls are pretty apt to come after you. So it gets pretty exciting when you get in there close. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> oh, my oh my god, god bro. bro! That's a trophy of a lifetime, man. That's a big bull. Look at that shit we walked. That was a trophy. <laughs> Just for fucking walking. <laughs> Holy shit, man. That's unbelievable. Can I tell y'all something? It's when I was looking at him in the scope over here, and we were looking head on, and I was just locking eyes with him. I don't, I don't know if y'all experienced this or it's the scope or what, but it was, he was purple. Yeah, his. Around the ed edges. Yep. Like, like a spirit or something. Fucking weird. It's, yeah, it's, cool. it's because it's, it's real. It's a special animal, man. It really is. Look at the background. Where you are right now. That was badass. Bro. 2,000 oh. miles for that, buddy. 100 miles, dude. We're in it we forever it, now. <laughs> We're in it forever now. <laughs> When I saw y'all dressed this morning, I was like, oh, these motherfuckers ain't wearing shit. <laughs> I should have known better. You should have told me. Takes about I see how y'all, though. <laughs> it's all right. I'll return the favor when you're in <laughs> South Texas. With that heat stroke. I'll be like, oh, you got a heat stroke? <laughs> As we set off the trek and go up this mountain or hill, whatever you want to call it, uh, the initial 20 minutes was probably most difficult for me because I wasn't mentally prepared for that climb and I wasn't in the right uh, fitting of clothing uh, because I was just overlayered and sweating. Uh, but as soon as we got up to the top of the mountain and then uh, we got word that the, the bison was down below uh, and Ignacio and I and Cody, our guide, we had uh, exchanged some personal stories that will remain on that range. And I think everything kind of just changed. It went from, we're not gonna see this buffalo to we had an interaction with the, with all of each other, and then I swear to you, five minutes later, we saw the bison. So, uh, and then we had to trek down that mountain. So mentally, for me, it was like, why did we trek up the mountain when we could have just been down here the whole time? But when we saw it, it was it was pretty damn far. It was far, and uh, that in itself was a challenge too. Uh, my legs were cramping. I was not prepared, I guess, physically. Um, and mentally, I should have drank more water. Uh, but as you get closer and closer to the bison, every moment changes. But one thing didn't change. And, and, and I will say, you know, I'm not a, a super religious person. It's not like you won't see me in church. But I think uh, I definitely was praying a lot. And, and that's what I do. You know, I, I pray a lot and things happen. And, uh, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And I think this was meant to be because as I initially saw the buffalo head on with my scope we were setting up uh, it was a, a weird experience but um, there was a purple hue around him and it was just the most magical thing ever and then we uh, had to get around him to get a side shot behind the head 
And at that moment, you know, I set up, and it, it was probably 10 seconds or less, probably five seconds. Uh, made my first shot, instantly went down, and I was happy for that because the last thing I want to do is put them in any kind of misery. And, and the second part of it was just being generous and appreciative that I was giving that opportunity. And I definitely earned it. <laughs> that was the very hard thing to do. I definitely earned it. That was the way to kill a buffalo, was to go in the most harsh conditions, trek through the snow, think about your ancestors, kill the bull, you know, and then the real work comes afterwards. But uh, luckily we had Cody and, and Shane and, and Ignacio and myself, we had people to help us. It takes a lot of work to kill a, and, and, and skin a 2,400 pound animal. Uh, but we're super happy today. Um, we've accomplished our mission and we're gonna go pick up the bison meat and I'm gonna feed a lot of families, a lot of friends. Hunting is a way of life for a lot of people. Uh, we make memories out of it, we make bonds, uh, we feed our family. It's, it's something that's very important in my life and, uh, and, and it's very important for me to express those things to the people around me. Um, it's, it's a way that I, can, I connect with, with, my, with my family and my friends. It's getting dark, but uh, the guys here at Brandon Bison, they know what, what's going on. They know how to get these animals killed. They know how to get them quartered. They know how to get them in the processor. They know how to make dreams come true. Good times. Oh,